first responder trainings now. Um, I've shared it with schools that just want to get a little extra tip. Um, a lot of health providers are picking it up, um, sharing it just as a short little training even um, for things like not dirt nurses and doctors and um, you know, my goal is just to keep it moving. We paused the um, we paused sharing it for just a short little bit because um, one of my goals was to launch this video. Um, obviously, we have other projects going on behind the scenes, but another goal was also to update our logo. Um, so our logo was designed at the start of PACT, um, and we have grown since in our knowledge about the puzzle piece and about how the autistic um, community feels about the puzzle piece and um, we wanted to be um, appropriate and sensitive to those those feelings about the puzzle piece and so we've hired in the last few months an autistic graphic designer that's helping us redesign our logo and he's about done with that project as well so we're going to launch that um, new logo design in a couple weeks and, and we'll really launch the video with that just to to make sure we're being sensitive and supportive of of all the ideas and you know the latest knowledge on on everything and you know the belief of belief um, in the celebration of autism along with the challenge that that comes with autism um, so that that is the that is the video that is the project again I'm, I'm really thrilled to be able to launch it in the last few months because again it's been a project that's been lasting for a long time I would really encourage you to share it and use it and um, it's housed on packedautism.com but um, it's also on um, Facebook and you know you can use you can share just the YouTube link and like I said I'll, I'll send out a little um, a link page after after the um, chat tonight, just so that you don't have to memorize any of those links. Um, but the only other thing I wanted to chat about today is a project that um, I'm a part of through my work, but also through the, the research that I'm doing. So I'm just going to share one more time. Um, hopefully you can see the image, yeah, I see it's coming up. It's going to be very hard to read um, at the moment, but again, I'll, I'll send this out. I might actually be able to send it through chat too, so I'll do that in just a second. Um, but this, let's actually, so I'm not doing one, more than one thing at a time. I'll, do, I'll just send it over the chat that way, if there's a better way. For you to look at it on your computer you can um so this is a, a survey that i'm a part of um that goes with the international society for autism research so that um international society for autism research is one of the biggest um research conferences and um, organizations that that gathers in a conference every year um, and has a, a really positive um, research following has a lot of autistic researchers and autistic input collaboration um, and they every year choose um, a policy brief so they choose what what area they believe is the most important um, they task a group to research it understand it survey the world about it um, and then it comes out with a brief that basically says um, to policyholders and into government agencies what we need to do in order to move this forward so um, NSAR has done many of these in the past um, and they always post them on their website and we were really lucky um, to get this topic um, in the last for the last year and so the group is an international group there's there's um, researchers and stakeholders from all across the world working on this project the outcome is meant to be um, something you know more academic that's a literature review so it'll look at all the literature that's been done um, but then the part that I'm I'm a part of and I'm really excited about is this survey so we're surveying any anybody that's involved in the criminal justice professional field so that's lawyers that's um obviously police officers that's um you know anybody anybody prison workers um community service workers as well as autistic individuals and their families and and our goal is just to get a really good understanding of what is going on worldwide what the strengths are what the areas of weakness are and and how we can improve um and so Hey buddy, just getting a visit from my son. Um, and so this project has just launched as well. So we launched it about a month ago. Um, and our goal is just to get as many responses as we can so that when we 
put together that policy brief in the next few months, we're really making sure we use the voices of um, those that are in this field and obviously the autistic community as well. Um, so I, I believe that went out on the listserv. Um, I know it, the listservs changed hands, so I don't, I can't as easily share as I could before, um, but I, I sent it to Mel and so if Mel hasn't sent it out, she'll, I'm sure she'll do so in the next little bit. Um, but I would just encourage you to, to put your responses in, in there if you can and, and share it with your different fields as well, because this, you know, as you all know, and as I've preached before, and as you know, as we've talked about in many meetings, this is just a critical, critical topic. You know, it's not just about the education of police; it's about the education of our autistic community and how we can make sure everybody's prepared for these safety um, risks and and knowing um, that their safety risks look different worldwide as well um, and, and what it looks like and how we can best support the community. So um, that's an exciting research project. And again, I know research isn't everybody's cup of tea, but I, I feel really positive about this one because it's so practical and it's it's coming out with such a, a, a great tool as well. Um, we all know the power of policy and, and how that kind of drives what we're actually able to get done um, across, the, across the country, across the world. And so we're hoping that this kind of can move things forward and make sure we, we've got funding supporting our work um, that, that lasts longer than just um, this year while it's a hot topic. Um, so those are our two main projects right now. Uh, um, again, I encourage you whenever you need anything to reach out and um, just know our, our website's always there as far as contact information goes. And um, I will always remain grateful to you all um, for our partnership and, and the support that you've given me over the years. Abby, you know that goes both ways. How, Abby, how, how long will the service stay open and up there? That's going to stay open for about three months. So there's there's some there's good time to share and and we'll reshare it and that kind of thing. So you've got about three months and it just opened. Okay. Just there you go. That's right. <laughs> he needed camera time. We needed to see him. Hello. He's been doing some sewing while I've been busy. We we have a public holiday here today. So otherwise. Oh, mama, I did one. Two, well done, buddy. <laughs> um, but yeah, it'll, it'll stay open for a few months. You think you've, you're the only one with good projects going on? I know, true. <laughs> I just, we'll highlight him next time. <laughs> <laughs> He's cute, really cute. Mm, okay. Hey, Aaron, you want to say hi? Sure. Hi. Hi, Aaron. Um, hey, Aaron. Hey, David. I saw your hello. So good to see you. Hi, Aaron. Hey, Michelle, you want to? Hello. Hi, Michelle. Hey, how's it going? Great. How are you? Good. Abby's got a boy. I know. This is saying I've got two actually, David. Believe it or not. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> I've got Miles. That's one, and this is Sam. He's three and a half. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we keep up with you guys on Facebook. <laughs> I absolutely love Aaron. I love the photos of you and love following you guys too. So great to say hello. <laughs> you remember Abby? That's awesome. Wow. Aaron is so grown. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Wowie. Okay. Um Let's see. So the the video you said you're going to uh, retool the. I, I I'm glad you mentioned that because I was going to uh, slip that little uh, tip to you that we're we're getting from other um, groups of self advocates. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, and that's been uh, you know it was tricky to decide if we launched it because we've been in the plans to to update our logo and for a while. But you know as you would all know, being an, a volunteer organization, you have to decide you know, what comes now and what comes later. And the, the video was just so long in the making. We wanted to get that out there. Mm -hmm. um, and then we had, um, like I said, had a, had hired an autistic graphic designer and um, he's an incredible, incredible artist. And he just, um, he goes through a big process in redesigning the logo, which is, we're excited. It should be in the next week or two that we get to launch that. So um, just updating, you know, what we know and what we, what we believe about autism and, and what we're working for. Mm -hmm. um, obviously we want to be, be sensitive to that and we you know we we tried to give the feedback as well originally when we designed that logo 
you know, we were really police minded. Our goal was that if police saw our logo, they would think autism. And, you know, at that time, puzzle piece was the, the really only, only picture of autism. And so that, you know, that was our original decision because we didn't want, you know, we wanted police to think autism when they heard our work. But again, so, since then we've grown so big and um, we've got autistic team members and, um, you know, I definitely, definitely want to stay um, sensitive and supportive of, of the community and, uh, and agree, you know, with that change of mind about, about the puzzle piece. So hopefully, yeah, watch for that in the next little bit. We're excited about that as well. Yeah, I'll be interested to see how it, how it comes out. I'm glad to hear you say uh, how you cast the video, because since I saw it a couple months ago, I've really been wondering about that. They're really awesome. They're awesome. Yeah. And I, I'll, sh I'll share that link too, of just the, their um, acting group in, in LA and they, you know, they were just incredible and um, a great group to work with. Um, and again, a very happy that, you know, crews for a cause, they're the ones that really led the project. You know, I led the content, but they led the project and um, you know, they, they took, made sure that that was a priority, that it was, you know, co-collaborated and, and made with autistic actors. So that was, that was exciting. Do you know how they cast them? How they curated the people to read the script? I don't, I, I got pictures, um, but yeah, I, I know that they, they um, again, being in LA, they are in movies, they're in, you know, they've got all the bells and whistles there. And so, you know, they just, they ran it for us. Um, yeah, I'm not exactly sure. I, I'm, I know it kind of, the way it reads is that some of them were reading it. Some of it were kind of ad-libbing it. Some had, you know, had it memorized, some went mm -hmm. off script. Um, but yeah, I think it, that turned out great. Mm -hmm. It really did. I think it's awesome. So let's see. Does anybody else have any questions? You can feed me a question. Abby, this is Mel. Um, I had a question. Are you guys looking at any outcomes? Like if the if the um, the actual um, video is is changing perceptions? Do you have any kind of qualita quantitative um, data that would look at that? Yeah, good question. Um, it's we're in the works for it, so we've just put in a couple grants, and we're in the middle of putting together a couple grants to to look at that. Um, the main outcome that we're working on research right now is is that um, police change of behavior. So we have great knowledge now that says, um, you know, with training with videos like this, that knowledge is changing. Um, awareness is changing, but we don't have any data that says whether or not behavior is changing. Um, so we definitely have the qualitative that says knowledge changes and awareness changes, and obviously positive feedback as far as um, great, good to know. I, you know, that's really interesting. That applies to my work, all that kind of thing we've got. Um, but yeah, like you're talking about that sort of perception change, but even one more step for us that we're really interested in is behavior change. What did you do differently? after watching and after learning. And so that's what we've just put in some grant funding for. So hopefully we'll hear back kind of mid-year about the grants and, and can launch that project um, where we'll, we'll hear a little bit more about that. Australia, um, I'm involved in a project here that has put out an online training um, all across um, Australian police. And so we're just doing that research as well now. What kind of behavior change do you have? So that that's kind of what's coming next now that we've um, as a research community have answered that question. Yeah, knowledge change. Yeah, they need it. Yeah, it's needed. Um, we know it's important, but we, we don't yet know kind of what that behavior change is and what are the active pieces? You know, do, is a video like mine short enough? Is that enough? <laughs> or do you need to sit in a training or, or meet somebody autistic or, you know, what is, what's, what's the thing that's um, changing your behavior? Well, there's a lot of research out there in terms of the impact of just a, a video. I know Lisa Rubel did a lot of stuff with that. And yeah. I think what was so powerful for what you did with your um, doctoral work is that the whole concept of the actual physical interaction between the police officers, the emergency medical staff and um, actual individuals. That to me was the, the piece that um, 
I, you know, just when I looked around the, the world or the country, I, I saw that lacking and it was really neat to, to know that um, we, ASBG had gotten to be a part of, of that effort, you know, in terms of making, have, being a part of that happening. Cause I think that really changed, um, yes. changed the, I don't know, the, 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 the narrative, if you will, in Absolutely. terms of all of this, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. So yeah, stay tuned. We'll hopefully get some funding on some of those projects in the next few years, the next, well, the next year, and then can get some of those answers. Yeah. Because everything is so webinar oriented. Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm sort of, I'm, I'm webinared out, you know, and I, I'm so thankful that you, you had those face-to-face -face and those personal interactions oh, yeah. with individuals and the officers. I think that was just so, Powerful. Yeah, our meet and greets is where um, we put in some funding as well for that that piece to see, because um, we believe very strongly that that's the active mechanism for a change is the, you know, that mm -hmm. you have the training and then you have the follow up meet and greet, whether it's a small scale or large scale, it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, we believe very strongly that that has to happen in order to see behavior change. Um, and so yeah, we'll hopefully yeah get some answers to that soon. But um, and that's what, you know, that's what the collaboration of PACT, that change in me going around and training to me handing out resources and empowering people to do their own meet and greets has been um, fueled by just because um, I think that that when somebody local does runs those events that that it can be really powerful um, and can get change a lot quicker than if, you know, a, a expensive trainer comes in. Hey, Abby, what is the mechanism for, you've got this video and the, the great thing about it is that you don't have to be one-on-one -on -one in person, you can get it. So, but I can imagine it's really challenging to get it out to police off departments and get you to yes. look at it. Yes, very challenging. And of course this year isn't the best year to push things out. So we've held off on, um, sharing it directly with police departments unless we already have a relationship with them and if we do then we're, we've shared it already um but that's you know hopefully when things settle down politically and um with covid when police have a second to um pause and and look at something like this yeah. that, that our hope is just to get it out yeah as soon as we can and that's what it, that's why we went with the Facebook advertising as opposed to um, putting our funding elsewhere because we knew at least that way, you know, somebody sees it and shares it with their uncle or cousin or brother or sister who's a police officer and, and yeah. just do the word of mouth for now. Um, but hopefully again, like I said, when, when things go down right now, when we're contacting police departments, they're obviously just saying they're, um, they've got too much going on, which is completely understandable. Yeah. Um, but hopefully, you know, six, give it six months or so and we can be able to use that as a tool of, of sharing it. So how would you though, how, how would you get it to like, you know? Yeah, yeah that's a good question. I mean, there's definitely some organizations um, that have their hand in a lot of different departments, but really it's state by state. Um, so I, I've been in the field long enough that I know most, a lot of the workers in a lot of the states. So there's, you know, some great workers in Florida, there's some great workers in Massachusetts. And, and so it's just knowing them and then giving it to them to share. Um, yeah, yeah, again, it's not easy. It d definitely takes takes a lot of time. Yeah. No. Well, always let us know if there's anything that we can do to I will. Thank you. help with a project, any project, yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, hopefully if, if some of these um, grants get funded, we'll definitely be reaching out because part, you know, part of my, my work now is just really ensure that we've got, um, active autistic collaboration from the beginning as well. So once once we find out if we've got grants funding, I may put calls out to see if um, any of your loved ones or family members or you yourself want to get involved just to, to make sure, um, you know, all perspectives are being taken into consideration and that, you know, the research is, is um, you know, not just reproduced by um, PhDs and <laughs> researchers, but, you know, actually coming from the community as well. So I'll reach out when, when we get some projects. I posted your link um, while we were talking to the discussion board and I put another link in chat that um, is a survey for adults about educational interventions 
currently is in use for children. I yeah, I saw that when I when I read that. Did you see that? I just saw it. Yeah, it looked really good. It looked really interesting. Um, yeah, I haven't I haven't looked at who's doing it or anything yet. I know it was UC Santa Barbara, wasn't it? I think. Yeah, I and know. it's a student, but um, mm -hmm. but it's an interesting model that I have. I don't think I've ever seen before. Mm. Yeah, so I agree. It'd be really interesting to look at police interactions and then also have feedback from an autistic person and say, you know, what would have made this situation better? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, if you have anything else that you want to uh, talk to us about, Abby, feel free to jump in there. And if anybody else has more questions for Abby, let's see. Let's see, Abby has posted in chat the survey. Well, I yeah. did post the question, but David just let me know that it went to private instead of everyone. Uh, Abby, what I was asking is whether or not you have set up a mechanism, uh, whichever way, strategies for us to access your information and for policemen in different communities to get information about you or, you know, figure out a project that they could run and add to the scope of what you do. Because the more that we can sustain this and keep it moving, the better it's going to be for our people. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, look, we so far it's just been the website. So we've been trying to post the research on the website. And once we get some of these new, a lot of our projects are just wrapping up. And like I said, we've got a few more coming up. Once we get those new opportunities, um, we'll post those as well. And so that people can collaborate with us and Really, it, it's it's on me to up my social media game. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm not. It's not been my favorite thing. Um, in fact, I need to find somebody to do it for me, really. Um, but just to you know improve my you know ability to say we're doing this project. We we're looking for these collaborators and that kind of thing. And social media, we know, is the way to go. Like like you all have found this year, um, with with your YouTube and your Facebook. Um, but right now, it's been the website. Um, but again, here in Australia, you know. Obviously, it's not it's not um, supporting the U.S. as well, but this um, this organization I work with does it does it really well. They've got a, a big listserv um, because they're service providers and and um, they work with schools as well. They've got a huge listserv that they use. And any time we do any project, um, all the projects go through an autistic committee that takes their time to look at the project and make sure the projects. Um, it, it, they kind of rate it on a priority is it should it be a priority or should it not and then we work we've got um autistic researchers here that we work really closely with so all of the research that i'm doing now um goes through that model which is great um and so even for example this international survey that i just shared um that's gone through this model um but I, like i said I'll, I'll try to keep it things posted up on my facebook um the pax facebook page so if you haven't added that please do that um as well as the the website i'll keep you know new collaboration and, and ideas and like you said that that's the way we keep it moving by by this collaborative effort um so I'll, I'll i'll do my best to to up my game on social media and make sure everybody hears about what's going on thank you thanks Hazel. that's good just want to know that it stays active it's yes. such a good product i agree thanks and abby just a question about australia does uh, do they have the long waiting lists for services that um, other the, in the, the states, like Looks especially like Kentucky, you know, where we have different Medicaid waivers and there are thousands of people on them. Do they have a better system in place to be able to provide uh, long term supports for individuals? Yeah, they, um, yes and no. So of, it's a worldwide problem, definitely. Um, but there's definitely not enough providers. But what Australia does have um, is, you know, we have health care for all. Um, and it, along with that, we've got something that's called the National Disability Scheme. Um, and so it's a huge funding agency that went out, a funding group that went out. I, I think it's only a few wow. years old, to be honest. And you apply for a funding package. Um, there's no limit to it. There's no wait list. So that's the that's the difference between Kentucky and Australia. And you, you basically just put forth what you need services for, what you need the extra funds for, what your 
um, what the healthcare doesn't provide, what you what you aren't getting. Um, and autism is one of the most funded categories. So for example, um, you know, somebody could get a package that funds their extra speech therapy, but also funds um, new diagnosis or funds, you know, whatever, whatever kind of services they need. And so that's much more attainable. Um, of course, people are, are, are always, um, you know, for the good, the good professionals, the positive, you know, the ones that we know are awesome at it, you know, there's still wait lists and that kind of thing for, but there's definitely more access and again, less wait for that funding as well. Um, and that, I think that's what makes things the most promising. Um, the, the big difference as well is in, is in the educational system. So, um, parents have the choice to send their their children, um, and this is not just autism for anybody, has the choice to send their child to a public school, um, a private school, or a disability specific school. Um, so it's not a model of inclusion in those disability specific schools. Um, and again, I was trained in the US with models of inclusion, obviously, and I know the benefits as well of that. But the great thing about those disability specific schools is that um, they've got all the services right there. So I worked um, for many years at a school that had um, a cap of 200 students, and we had 160 staff. Um, and so and that was teachers, educational support workers, physical therapists, speech therapists. Um, we had a dentist, we had a, you know, you, ha you have it all there. And so, you know, while of course parents still need support and you know, the after school, the after school care program, anyway, we, we, you can see what, yeah. how that could benefit um, and support. And obviously it's not a perfect model um, either, but it, yeah, I think it's just the wait time that's probably different, mm -hmm. but a severe lack of good professionals like there is anywhere across the world. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Mel. You're making us jealous. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know. I, I know. Yeah. I hope this, yeah. Right. This, <laughs> I heard somebody say not me. <laughs> uh, that one. That one. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, but but don't don't worry about it. We don't have to go very far to get jealous, even in the state. So yes, I know. And right now, of course, yeah, there's mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, some challenges. Well, I'm I'm actually going to sign off in the next little bit because my kiddos are going to need put down for nap. And like I said, it's a public holiday here. Um, otherwise, I would have endless time. They they'd be in school today. Um, <laughs> Oh no, that's too bad. I'm sorry. Sorry, we had we took you away from your holiday. No, no, I'm. It's it's not really. It's the end. So it's the end of our summer holidays. It's kind of the last day. I've been back to work, um, but my partner Sarah goes back to teaching. All the schools start again tomorrow, and every everything sort of gets moving again after our summer holidays. So no, didn't take didn't take me away. I'm always happy to chat, like I said. But um, and yeah, your COVID numbers are good there, aren't they? Oh, they're so good. Yeah, I, uh. I really am sorry. <laughs> yeah. I, I know it really is something to be sorry about. I mean, over yeah, it's, uh, here, it's been awful. I mean, yeah, my heart's been breaking every day for you all. Um, and we, yeah, look, we're, we were just, um, we had a lot of advantages that I think um, shouldn't be discounted. For example, the fact that we could close our borders. I mean, I think that, that, you know, we, U.S. can't, <laughs> you know, whereas we could, and we did it really quick. And so that, yeah, we've had zero cases mm -hmm. in, in our area for a long while. Um, and and when we do, when we did have um, spikes, our spikes stayed under, you know, a thousand and everybody locked down. And so we did, you know, we did a hundred days of being locked down in our houses and not leaving mm -hmm. our 5k radius, but it did the job. So sure. definitely worth it in the oh, end. Yeah. I, yeah. I've often said, I mean, that that's harsh. It's difficult, but yeah. um, it, if you could just put all your efforts into that period of time, then you can be yeah. done. And and open economies yes yeah so anyway it was really tough but it was definitely worth it and i feel yeah we feel very fortunate to have our, our boys somewhere safe during yeah. yeah yeah i'm glad that you have been somewhere safe that you, your Thank little you. family has been safe thanks Sarah. yeah okay well i we will let you get back to that family hopefully mel did you get in touch with your fire representative or not mel i'm sorry no, he's there? not emailed me back. So I guess I, I can I can share. I mean, yeah, basically, yeah. Yeah. we at the Autism Society um, has allocated 
some funding to purchase the um, audible alarms, the door alarms for, um, for and we have a point of, in, point of contact at Lexington Fire Department. So I'm really excited about that. It's just getting those um, with COVID and whatnot. Um, I wasn't sure if we were gonna be able to you know, make use of that, but we do have a firefighter that is gonna be willing to um, install those alarms as well as uh, smoke detectors uh, if there's a need you know, for family. So um, we just gotta purchase the uh, door alarms and get them to the fire department for distribution. And I'm sure everybody here knows what she's talking about, but she's just talking about audible door alarms for children who elope and possibly some, she could tell us it, that go on windows too, just some of those yeah. really loud that when there's a disconnect, uh, they, they are piercing. Yes, yeah. Because we have a lot of families that can't afford the fancy um, uh, security systems, you know, so this might, this would be a, a means to an end on the, to, I guess, to protect a child mm -hmm. or an adult. Um, yeah. that maybe has a, a history of elopement from the home. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did, are they doing a, Melanie, do you know if any other fire departments are doing this or is this? No, but my, I guess my plan is, is to figure out how to um, get this. Cause um, I talked to um, uh, Morgan Skaggs, who I used to serve on the state EMSC for children um, committee. And um, I, you know, the, uh, I always, when I was on it, I was always pushing to have them to make sure they include issues around special needs autism, because um, oftentimes the, the EMS staff are going to be the one that has the first encounter with that child, you know, or the or the parent, the panicked parent caregiver that's calling EMS uh, to um, help, help. I, you know, my I can't find my child, kind of thing. So um, she works with several of the different um, uh, age, uh, fire departments in the state, and so I, to me that it just makes sense. Is that this would be a a easy, low expense um, resource to be able to share in a community that maybe would help um, uh, a family that didn't have a lot of funds or resources available to them to, you know, for a fancy security system to have something in place. And so, how did you say you're gonna distribute the product just on request? Yes, that, I mean, that's the goal. Right now with, with what we're trying to do for Fayette, because we focused on Fayette initially and, and ASBG was nice enough to um, uh, give us some money to purchase um, several of the um, these easy to install door alarms. Um, the big, biggest thing was, okay, how do we get them from us to the people that would need them? And the fire department, Lexington Fire Department was nice enough to say, we'll, we'll take, we'll do that. We'll be the point of contact so that when um, we'll have a stash, a supply in a, at a certain fire department. And so when we become aware of a, of a family that would benefit, that would need that kind of support, then that they could go to that fire station and there, it'd be free. You know, they'd just be able to, to get them. That's awesome. It looks like she was trying to join the meeting, but you, You'd yeah, I, I sent that to you guys. She couldn't find the the link anywhere, uh, so I I sent it to her and uh, um, okay. You did. You did. You did. <laughs> and Morgan just sent me an email. She goes, "No, Mel, you're still on the committee."